I'm really excited and honored to be here today to be your MC. So let's get started. I see Rachel's in the queue here. We have Rachel Kluth. Rachel is a fine working mom and loving wife and a warrior with, in a battle against kidney disease, just like many of us here on the uh, webinar today. Her days are spent nurturing her family, excelling in her career, and navigating the world of home hemodialysis. She knows the importance of self-care, discipline, and the value of a precious moment, and she has great family support. Rachel, we can't wait to hear your story, so thanks for being here today and sharing your experiences with our viewers. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I don't feel that I am a traditional ESRD patient because I had no warning that my kidneys were going to fail. Um, I've had type one diabetes probably since I was 16 years old. So that ultimately led to what, what caused them to fail. Um, and it, it just got to a point to where I got, I had over a hundred pounds of fluid on me and I couldn't take it anymore. So I decided, I was like, all right, I'll go to the hospital, I'll see what's wrong with me. So like most people approach it with, I don't want to do dialysis. I'm hesitant to do that. I don't like that. Like it, it's, it's not fun. It's not a walk in the park by any means. But like when they said, we're going to do some dialysis to see if we can get the fluid off of you. I said, let's go. Sure. Because I mean, at the time, my two daughters, one was two, the other one was eight. So I would pick them up from daycare, put Chick-fil-A on the table and go lay down. Like the big one fed the little one. I was not being a mom by any means. And like, it was not what I wanted for my family. And I mean, I'm one of those stubborn people who's like, it's okay. I'll just walk it off. It'll get better. We'll keep trudging along. And like, it didn't get better. So anyways, <clears throat> my, my little feeling out here. <clears throat> so I probably spent a month in the hospital and I I was kind of one of those people who like I, they didn't have to coax me into doing home dialysis I knew that's what I wanted to do it's really strange because there used to be a commercial on when I was like in high school I'd be home from school and I'd see it and the guy got pulled over for speeding and he's like well I'm going to dialysis and they were like you can do that at home so like I always knew you could do it at home so, I mean, I just kind of, I approached the the challenge as though like, this is, it's the way that I do everything in life. I say, I will, thank you. Somebody else has seen it. I Googled everywhere and I couldn't find it. So I approach everything in life with the mentality of, I will cross that bridge when I get to it. Like my house is packed up. You can't see it's very naked looking in here, but we're in the process of closing on a house. We don't know when we're going to close. We have to be out by the end of the month. And it's like, well, we'll cross the bridge when we get to it. <laughs> but anyways, so I knew that home dialysis was what I was going to do. But I didn't exactly know how I was going to get there. It surprised me when they wouldn't let me leave the hospital without me having a chair time at a center. So I just took the earliest morning chair time so that I could go to dialysis from five in the morning to nine and be at work by like nine 30 or 10 and then work until like seven or eight at night to try and make the time up that I was missing in the morning. Because again, very driven, very stubborn. <clears throat> so. So I spent probably seven months in center because they didn't have a seat to train me for home. So when it came time to train, I was, I mean, I had the same worries, like, how am I going to stick myself? Am I going to be able to do this? Like, and like, that was probably the biggest fear I had. I wasn't worried about like administering the treatments or what do I do if there's an emergency? Because I mean, I'm, I'm pretty level headed. One day I was doing my machine and I didn't clip something and I started feeling weird about an hour and a half into it. There's like a pool of blood 
on my floor. My 13 year old is about to cry because she thinks mommy's dying. I'm like, baby, I feel fine. I feel a little bit dizzy, but like, this is not the end of the world. <clears throat> Wait, that actually happened? So <clears throat> having complications didn't really bother me. It was more so getting over the fear of having to stick myself. So if you see my arm, I have a considerable amount of tattoos. I think I've got one up there. So like needles, I've tattooed myself. Needles don't scare me. And I can honestly say, and one of the things I say in the groups a lot is 100%, it hurts less when you stick yourself. I use the numbing cream. I wrap it for maybe a half an hour, sometimes up to two hours, depending on what I'm doing that day. But like, if you go to stick yourself and it, it kind of stings a little bit or it feels uncomfortable, you then have the opportunity to stop, take a deep breath, kind of prepare yourself and say, all right, this might not feel the best, but it's not the worst pain in the world. I'm going to get through it and just kind of like be patient with yourself and coax yourself through it. Whereas when somebody else sticks you, you just kind of hand them your arm. You're like, all right, brace, brace for the impact. You don't have to do that when you do home. <clears throat> So I like that. Um, going back to my training, I elected to not train with a partner. I have a husband. He's super helpful. He does all of my heavy lifting and helps with my inventory and stuff like that. Or if I am actually in treatment and have an issue that I can't resolve, he'll be there for that. But as far as setting up the machine, cannulating myself, getting on and off of it. I do all of that myself. I, I trained to be a solo patient. I didn't want to have to be dependent on somebody else to be around for me to do dialysis. My husband plays in two bands and some days he's not even here. So to have to rely on him to be here every single time for me to treat, that wasn't going to work for our lifestyle. So when it came to kind of deciding why I wanted to choose the home, I told y'all I knew I wanted to do home all along. So why didn't you just do PD? I have little girls and a big part of our life is going to the water park. We have season passes, sometimes more than one water park, but that's what we do. We constantly go to theme parks like that's a huge part of our lifestyle. And I didn't want to give that up. I mean, it, it became, do you want to suck it up and put a needle in your arm? Or do you want to do this other machine, but then you can't go swim with your kids? And also, I live in Texas. Okay, it's 90 today, 90 degrees in October. And like, it's just, you don't not swim in Texas. <laughs> so that also kind of, that was the main thing that made me just say like, absolutely not. I wasn't going to give up being able to swim. <clears throat> so what does my life look like on home hemo? Because I do home hemo, I have been able to maintain a full-time job. I work in an office Monday through Friday, like eight to five. And it's just, it's allowed me, I've had more success professionally during the five years that I've been on dialysis than I did prior at all. When I got sick, I was an accounting assistant. Since then, I was a sales engineer for a subsea rental company. I became the operations manager of one of them. And it's just, it's, I attribute that to, to my drive and the fact that I kind of, my old boss told me I refused to let myself be sick. He says, because my hair used to be blue, so he called me blue. He says, a sick blue works harder than a lot of regular healthy people, which is just a compliment to my work ethic, which I'm really proud of. <clears throat> so in addition to being able to work and provide for my family and help us buy the house that we're buying next week week. Um, it also gives me a lot more time to be active with my kids. So both of my daughters are pretty active Girl Scouts. Um, they've been in Girl Scouts since you could be in a Girl Scouts. One of them is a brownie 
And the other one, she's a cadet. So she's about to go into high school. I'm really proud that she's still sticking with it. Um, I can go camp with them sometimes. I mean, granted, I have to plan for it. So if it's like a Friday, Saturday camping event, I have to know that, all right, I should probably do the machine at least Thursday and Wednesday prior so that I have a good cleaning to go into it. So, I mean, it's just the fact that I can sit there on a Sunday night, talk to my husband and say, okay, when are you practicing this week? Are you playing any shows? He tells me I'm practicing Monday and Wednesday and we're going to play, I think, Saturday. Okay, well, I know that that means that I'll do the machine on these days and these days and these days. And I mean, it just, it works really well. I do the machine most of the time from about eight to 11 at night, four nights a week, because that's kind of, you, you do it more if you're an at-home patient than if you're an in-center patient. And then once I get off the machine, I go to sleep. And the good thing about that is, so most complaints are, well, after I do the dialysis, I'm just wiped out and I'm tired and I can't for a day or so. I avoid that by sleeping after my treatment. I get my, my full night's rest six hours at best after my treatments. So like my, my body clock resets when I wake up for work the next morning. <clears throat> and that's super helpful. So going back to <clears throat> more benefits of doing it at home um, that I see a lot of people question it is like, they want to be able to travel. I traveled once when I was in center. I had a really good experience. Davida booked my chair time for when I wanted it and where I wanted it. I haven't had complications with that. I've heard other people do. But when I got sick, my number one and number two things I wanted, like, not that I thought I was going to die, but if I was going to die, right, I want to take my kids to Disney and I want to buy them a house. Well, I'll have a house in a week and we didn't just go to Disney. We went to Disneyland and then we went on a Disney cruise. I took the machine everywhere with me. Like I've been to Las Vegas with the machine and like it came down the baggage conveyor belt and was like, boom, boom, boom. Everybody's looking at me and my husband are like, that's us. That's mine. Thank you. <clears throat> I've hand carried my supplies. I've shipped my supplies to my location and had them arrive. It's all really workable and feasible. Like it can easily be done. You just, you have to kind of like have, have determination. I, I would say if you did it by yourself, it would be kind of hard. I, I do have my husband who like carries it everywhere for me. <clears throat> so I meant to grab pictures, but I didn't, but I mean, like I said, I did the dialysis on the cruise. I mean, and it really, it wasn't even bad. I was like at dinner, my machine was set up. My arm was numbing after we went and had like our Mickey Mouse dinner. Then I went back to the room and I just did the machine. And like, it was easy. My older daughter was allowed to walk around the cruise boat because I didn't have to be with her. And she got to still go have fun. Like it didn't interrupt anybody else's time. And like... I know there are a lot of avid cruisers and like one of the things that, you know, I feel like is very difficult. You can't cruise if you're not a home patient. You can, but like I looked at dialysis at sea, it is hugely expensive and you have to pay for it. I think like cash out of pocket. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And same with like when I see people who want to travel to like other countries and stuff like that, it's just it's hard. And also you don't know their standards or their cleanliness and stuff like that. Like I always used to joke around, like, uh, I guess I'm not going to go to Mexico because I don't want to clean my country in a blood. And I, I don't want to clean my blood in a country where I won't drink the water. Might not be a great idea. Again, I don't have to worry about that anymore. My husband, like I said, he's a musician. We went to a festival in Las Vegas called punk rock bowling probably two years ago and took the machine i went and i saw all the bands that i like and then went and did the machine later on that night like it's just i cannot express how 
it will allow you to like live your life to the fullest. And the fact that you can treat on your time when you want to, when it works for you, like I've figured out if I do it at night, I sleep and I don't feel bad. I have woken up early in the morning and done it. And then sometimes I will have that fatigue. So I'm not saying I'm immune to it, but you can really avoid it and kind of like manipulate your time. Mm -hmm. Anyone have questions? Put them in the chat. Yeah. I'm also like, when it comes to having like, yes, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. When it comes to like having like the, the fluid restrictions and stuff like that, there are times I've drank too much. I don't worry and have that fear and anxiety because if I drink too much, I'm just going to go sit on the machine. Like, and it, it'll be okay. Like, I don't have to. And I know that like when I was in center during the weekend, I would always be, be fearful. Like, Oh, well, what if, what if I had an extra glass of, you know, Sprite or something? Yes. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm on my phone. I will, I will show you my machine. <clears throat> Let me get out. So when it came to transplant, I had to lose 20 pounds because I'm extra medium. Um, so I lost it probably a year ago and I'm still listed, but they think they say I should get a call like any day now honestly I'm trying to move so if it came right now I'd be like let me sign for this house first and then y'all can move me and I'll come back to new house and new kidney and new me um, anyways all right let me see if I can flip my camera <laughs> yes all right so my room's kind of messy that's my machine the bottom part of it right here makes the dialysate uh, it takes about six hours to make mine. The top part is the actual machine. Uh, I don't have a cartridge in here. But so, yeah, that's my machine. And then most of my supplies I have in this thing. Um, I have a shelf in my closet, but I I packed most of it. Sorry, y'all. But then I have a couple of other like little things here. That's one of the sacks of concentrated dialysate. And then I have my needles over there and some syringes. <clears throat> I can show y'all where I store my stuff too, but that's in my garage and it literally is like a box. Rachel, you're so organized. Well, I try. <laughs> Also, Rachel has made a video that we're going to post. So, yeah, uh, thanks, Lori. I forgot about that. They sh it shows your garage. <laughs> it does. I'm in my garage now. Okay, so that stack of boxes by the drum, that's pretty much my next stage stuff. Because another concern is people who, like, I don't have enough room for all that stuff. That's my stuff. Like, it's not really that much. My husband likes to think it's more. But, I mean, it fits pretty nicely. But, yeah, I did. I Lori did a video, kind of like documentary, of kind of what my treatments look like. It also answers a lot more questions and just kind of shows, like, what a typical treatment looks like. I'm not going to say that they're all great. Some of them are difficult, but. <laughs> so, so, Rachel, um you um, didn't get to train for HHV for about seven months. So um, how did you keep on top of that? Were you like a nag or anything for the, to get on the schedule? So where I worked at the time was next door to a home dialysis clinic. So I would just go over there and they're like, oh, well, we don't have it. Like there's a huge nursing shortage. I don't have a nurse right now. I have a travel nurse. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they didn't have a nurse to train me. So I live in Houston, which is one of the biggest medical cities in the country. So I just found another one. We have, I think, three home clinics here. So I had to drive a little bit, but it wasn't the worst thing in the world. I was like, well, if you can take me now and train me now, I'll go over here. I just want to get this done so that I know where I'm at in life. Like until I... I'm a home patient. I'm just kind of like treading water because this isn't what I want. 
Right. You're waiting on that transplant, right? I am. I'm, I always say I don't think anybody likes me enough to give me a kidney, but <laughs> okay, go wash that in your room, please. Sorry. Somebody got sick at school, so I had to go and get her today. That's why I'm at home and not in my office. But um, yeah, I mean, oh, the ultimate goal is to get a transplant and it's just kind of a waiting game. And it's frustrating too, because people will say like, well, how long do you have to do dialysis? Uh, forever? Until I get a kidney? Oh, well, do they have one for you? Like you're, you're on the list. When are you going to get it? And I'm like, just waiting for somebody to die. <laughs> especially right now, because if I, if I've been asked that here recently, I say, I'm just, you know, waiting for somebody to die and then they'll call me. And, uh, you know, with Halloween and the holidays coming up, it's the busy season. So don't drink and drive. When you meet new patients and they find out you're on home hemodialysis, do any of them ever say there's no way they could do that? And what's your advice? People say, I have small children. I can't do this. Alyssa was three years old whenever I came home. She's never tried to pull my lines out. She's never done anything that makes me at risk while I'm on the machine. She's drawn my blood for me before. I tell her she's going to be my nurse one day. Well, she will be a nurse one day. And I mean, I don't have space. I When I went on home dialysis, we lived in a mobile home. And it was 800 square feet. And there were four of us living there. I stored my supplies under the coffee table. I stacked them up in the corner next to the machine. Like where there is a will, there is a way. How fabulous. You're fabulous. I think the biggest thing is I don't want to have to stick myself or I can't. And I don't feel like it's necessarily you can't. It's more like you don't want to. And it's not... I say it's not easy, but it's like second nature. What does it say? How long did your home hemo? Yes. How long was your training? Mine was six weeks. I have seen crazy people who do it in like two. Um, but yeah, mine was a good solid six weeks. They said that I learned it really fast. But again, I'm one of those take charge people. Sorry. You might have lost me. My phone alerted me. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a full six weeks of training. I went every single day. I think my husband showed up as my care partner for maybe an hour, twice a week, mm -hmm. just to kind of like say like, this is what it is and this is how it, it works. We have a question from Mary. Um, I'm sorry, for sure. How does one combat the fatigue after home or in center dialysis? That's where I think me going to sleep and doing it at night really helps me because I just, I don't feel it. Like when I'm getting off the machine, it's anywhere from 1130 at night to like one in the morning, just depending on how the day goes. So I mean, it being that late at night, I just kind of like, because I do it in my room. Y'all saw my machine was in my room with my adjustable base bed, which is super helpful. Highly recommend. And I mean, I just, I sleep after it. And it's like my body resets. Like I've done the dialysis. Now I've rested to recover from it and I'm ready to have a new day. So we only have one more minute, Rachel, to hear your... Um story. And so I think we have another question. Um, you, oh, someone said you can, uh, Mary said you can stick yourself when you must. So, um, anybody, yeah. can, anybody can learn that if, if they have vision and touch and dexterity in their hands, you know, there are a few people that don't qualify to stick themselves, but most do. And, um, we just, we love your story, Rachel. You're so inspiring. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. All right. Yeah. And I mean, Lori's going to share my um, video that I did for them. I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm in some of the groups. So if anybody wants to reach out and speak to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can message me. I often reach out to people who I see are struggling 
and just let them know like it's not that bad if i could get one thing from this experience i really wish that there were more patients out there in the public eye like me because when you get sick it seems like a death sentence I went to center and all of these sick people were old and feeble and around me. And they looked like they were like struggling to breathe. And I said, this is not me. And that's what you see that I feel like is the picture of dialysis. You don't see a whole lot of people who are out there who are still living, who are having regular average lives, who haven't had to quit their job because the disease has crippled them so much. Great so, advice, yeah. Rachel. Thank you so much. Y'all are welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes. And a shout out to our corporate mission partners for making this happen.